Hello, it is Monday, July 26th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome to my New York Times crossword, Daily Solve. It's a Monday, so as we settle into the work week, as we kick off the work week, we're going to do it with the gentlest puzzle of the week, which is always a nice way to get into the swing of things without too much challenge. But a little bit of challenge is good in general. Um, there was some research that I was reading about over the weekend that was published in the journal Neurology that suggests that there may be a considerable value in activities like crosswords, uh, this sort of word puzzle, things like that, but also writing, for instance, and regular reading, can help delay dementia. Uh, sort of feeds into, I guess, what researchers call the use it or lose it theory of cognition, which is that if you don't regularly exercise your mind and use your mental faculties, um, they will decline more rapidly uh, with that lack of use. So crosswords, good thing to be doing. Um, essentially, the study followed 2,000 elderly people, and over the course of seven years, about a quarter of them, about 25%, developed Alzheimer's. But what was the interesting part is that those who most often engaged in word puzzles and uh, reading books and newspapers and writing letters, things of this nature, uh, those people actually, on average, developed Alzheimer's five years later than the people who did those activities the least. Um, and they did attempt to control for what might be sort of uh, causality, I suppose, in the other direction, which is that, well, perhaps the people who developed Alzheimer's later already had superior cognitive function or something like that, or maybe the people um, who developed Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's earlier, maybe they already had some form of Alzheimer's. But um, through uh, a combination of examination of cognitive activity at the start of the trial and post-mortem examinations of their brains that searched for um, particular toxic proteins that I'm not qualified to discuss, um, they determined that there wasn't really any difference in the brains physically it's just that the people who read more and did more puzzles were were somehow able to sort of hide the the activity the the uh, detrimental effect of this disease and and in practice reduce its effect and um, anyway certainly interesting I think relevant to this channel um, it it makes intuitive sense I would say that doing this kind of activity would help keep your brain limber. I mean, it's not going to, uh, definitive, to definitively prevent any particular thing from happening to you, but it certainly can mitigate, mitigate the effects and be a help in the long run. So something to keep in mind. I also wanted to return to some clues from yesterday's puzzle, or rather the theme, I suppose, from yesterday's puzzle. And you know what? Let's actually load up yesterday's crossword. I can never remember where the archive is here. Uh, maybe it's this. Because uh, there were a couple things. Um, something I realized after completing the puzzle, which, and if, I'm sorry, if you <laughs> switch away from this for a second, if you don't want to see this um, for spoiler reasons, uh, at the bottom of the screen, there's a little uh, sort of chapter heading on the uh, timeline that will allow you to skip past uh, yeah, this yesterday's clues segment onto today's solve. So I'm going to switch back to the other screen now. Um, one thing I didn't quite understand yesterday when I solved this puzzle was what it meant that the theme involved I and X, and there were these I and X circles that now uh, were filled with an asterisk, and they served as the stars, the bright stars, in the constellations that are drawn on the grid after it's been completed. And what those are, essentially the idea is that if you were solving this on paper and writing in an I and then an X on top of it, you would essentially create a little star shape or a little asterisk. And so that's what those are meant to be. And I... I I uh, completely didn't pick up on this. And to be fair to myself, the computerized solve of this 
fills it with uh, an asterisk with five uh, spokes, I suppose, which does not match the six-spoked version of it that would be created with um, with an I and an X crossing. And so I, it was a bit misleading there, but it is very clever. And it's a shame that the typography doesn't match up with the cleverness of the theme. This theme just gets cleverer and cleverer. Um, I also missed that this Alpha and Beta Ursae Majoris, this refers to stars within the Ursa Major constellation. So this is referring to Alpha Ursae Majoris and Beta Ursae Majoris. And those are um, particularly bright stars in the Ursa Major the constellation. And what was fascinating when I was reading about these stars on Wikipedia, the <laughs> Uh, certainly the most definitive uh, uh, astronomical source, but I think definitive en enough for my cases, is that these two stars point towards Polaris, the North Star, which was clued as a guiding light in yesterday's puzzle, which is astonishing because here we see that the Majoris answer is literally pointing straight across to Polaris. Just beautiful. Um, really an, an overall wonderful puzzle with a really great um, a great set of clues and an, an amazingly multi-layered uh, theming. So really enjoyed that. Someone else actually, Stravagante, had a very funny uh, interpretation of the I's and X's in the puzzle. And sadly, I don't think this is the correct interpretation, but I do think it's the most sort of beautiful interpretation. Um, this person says, since the X's represent stars as they form the Dipper constellations and they double as eyes in the puzzle, I imagine the theme is alluding to some romantic notion of the stars in your eyes. Now, I I unfortunately don't think that's the explanation. I do think it's the more prosaic I crossing an X makes a sort of star shape. But I think that's a beautiful notion and I really like it a lot. And I I commend, <laughs> commend uh, Stravagante for that very poetic interpretation of this theme. Anyway, again, well done, Shandi Deitmer. Certainly one of the most impressive themes I've seen in recent memory. And let's move right on after all of that preamble, quite a lot of preamble. Let's move on to the Monday puzzle, which was constructed by Tommy Polly, edited as always by Will Shorts. And again, it's a Monday, so it shouldn't be too uh, punishing. Let's get going. Ah, and there's going to be a theme already. Back back into the themes, which is always fun. With 68 across, what the trio in this puzzle's clues is trying to promote. So we see down at 68 across, we've got C1 across. So we're going to have a compound word or phrase here that is um, maybe a brand name or something. Maybe there will be characters, trio of characters elsewhere in the um, in the puzzle but don't know yet, so let's keep going. Enthusiasts could be fans. Let's put that in and see what happens. A whole lot could be a slew or a scad, I suppose. Slew seems like a more ordinary word. Let's look at the cross. Israeli airline, yeah. So that would be El Al, see so Israeli flag carrier, which is what one calls the sort of national airline of a country. It, not all countries have that. Um, the U.S. doesn't for short, for, for instance. Anyway, down, post-World War II alliance, that would be NATO, the North Atlantic uh, Treaty Organization. Cat-like, to be cat-like is to be feline. I am currently staying in this house with a feline being that is not, is not my pet because I am cat-sitting. Home of 17 of the 20th highest peaks in the U.S., well, Based on the letters and the fact that it seems quite plausible, let's say this is Alaska. The ability to keep one's balance on a ship are one's sea legs. Oops. I uh, mistyped that. Sea legs, not sea gels or whatever it is I put in there. Just something entirely unrelated and possibly non-existent. Like a ship on an ocean floor. Well, if a ship is on an ocean floor, unfortunately, it has sunk. Perhaps its crew did not have their sea legs and didn't do the most efficient job. Coverings on ears of corn. Well, it's a husk that covers an ear of, of corn. Twists of lemon or lime. 
it's probably a zest or a peel or a rind, but a, a twist, I think, refers to the zest. I'm not, I'm not a, am I certain about that? Well, a fencing blade is an epee. Could be a foil as well, but but I think that E is probably helping us out. Tax IDs. So this is a, presumably this is a, a US specific tax question and is referring to a social security number, your SSN. The Greek philosopher known for paradoxes, uh, Zeno. One of Zeno's paradoxes, he had a few, one of them that I, I really enjoy is the paradox that, <laughs> I don't know how it was phrased, but it's the idea is essentially that you can never get to your target point because to get there, um, let's put it in the terms of this crossword. If we're going to solve this crossword, we have to solve all of the clues and clues in this crossword. Well, all of the clues consists of two halves of the clues. So let's say we complete the first half of the clues. Great, we've done half the crossword. Well, now we've got to finish the other half, and that half, of course, is also made up of two halves. So now we complete the next half of the crossword. Uh, and now we're down to, well, now we've done 75% of the clues and we've got a half of that half of that half remaining. So let's, well, we've got two halves of those. So essentially, however much distance you have left, you always have to complete both halves of it. So you keep completing a half of the next bit, then a half of that bit, then a half of that bit, and you'll never actually be able to get all the way to the end of your destination. We'll never be able to complete this crossword, although it doesn't work quite as well in the crossword because there are a finite number of clues. So eventually there will be either one or a half of a clue remaining. And if it were a half, maybe we could say we round up and defeat Zeno. But the paradox is more effective if you think of it in terms of a distance that can always be sort of divided into atomic, increasingly uh, tiny distances. Anyway, obviously we can get to where we're going and we are going to finish this crossword. So the paradox isn't meant to suggest that you can literally never get where you're going. It's just an interesting um, sort of paradox introduced by thinking about a problem in a particular logical light. Anyway, with 68 across, what, and that was Zeno who, who formulated that one. With 68 across, what the trio in this puzzle's clues is trying to promote. Um, what would end with two Zs? I don't know, we'll have to come back to it. Lhasa blank dog. Well, I think actually this breed came up maybe last week. Lhasa apso is what that is. A jokey comment is a jest. All right. Well, I thought this might be jazz because very few words end in two Zs, but what are you trying to promote? A jazz what? Jazz club? I don't know. Let's keep looking. The first member of the trio said he'd blank. To this own self be true or something? That doesn't sound right. Uh, let's keep looking. When to stargaze? Um, this looks odd. I wonder if sea legs is correct. Let's look at some crosses. A feudal sovereign. Well, that would be a liege, so it seems fair enough. Serpentine, serpentine letter, so a letter of the alphabet in this case that is uh, in a snaking pattern, an S for snake. Sorta, sort of ish. Oh, when to stargaze at night. Sorry, I was thinking of something more specific than that, like dusk or something, but night, of course, makes sense. Particularly on a Monday, we're going to get relatively straightforward answers and clues. The I in FWIW, um, so that's an acronym meaning for what it's worth. So the I is its. Community spirit, um, could be a couple things, I think. Leisure boats. Well, I suppose this is yachts. Um, cries of pain could be yelps. A pig pen is a sty, a pig sty. Full of gristle, say. Well, if you've got some meat that's full of gristle, it's going to be very chewy. And that say in the answer, what that means is that this doesn't, this isn't literally a synonym for the clue, it's an example of what the thing might be. So if something's full of gristle, it might say, it might be chewy, as opposed to it meaning chewy literally, which it doesn't specifically mean. One of 16 in a chess set, that would be 16 pawns. Community spirit, so this is an ethos. Unwelcome look, an unwelcome, well, one, one unwelcome look would be a leer. 
let's look here. We don't ever, we didn't ever look at this clue. Bothered as one's conscience, right? So if something ate at your conscience, it would bother you, be bothering. Okay, so the first member of the trio, and the trio in question is the one who's promoting whatever it is, begins with jazz. To this to this own, what am I reading wrong about this? Or what did I enter incorrectly into the grid? Tooth, I so I don't, okay. I'm missing something. I really apologize if you see what this is. To this own horn, to this own horn. I don't know, let's keep, let's keep going. I apologize, but this is very clear. To move stealthily could be to slink or to sneak. Could be either of those, but it starts with an S in either case. So let's look at the cross. Network for watching Congress. Unfortunately, this is another US specific clue and refers to C SPAN. Uh, no. Yeah, C SPAN. C SPAN is a uh, uh, cable television network that broadcasts congressional um, coverage. Lead into gender. This would be cisgender when you are born into the gender identity with which you identify or the sexual identification with which you identify on the gender side. 2014 film starring David Ayolowo as Martin Luther King Jr. That was Selma. Organization that funds PBS. I believe one of the organizations that funds PBS. Another, you in this case, U.S. Broadcasting specific answer, crossing here with C-SPAN, is the National Endowment for the Arts, the NEA. To accustom is to inure. So uh, over time, you get inured to some of the very unusual crosswordy sort of words that end up in crosswords all the time, like apso, lasa apso. What sleeves hold? Well, they hold your arms. And I suppose, is there a sort of version of sleeve that corresponds to weaponry, armaments? I don't know. Uh, sounds like there might be, but I'm not sure. So move stealthily is not slink, it is sneak. Lou Gehrig's disease, for short, is, I think, ALS is the, the formal acronym of that di disease. The second member of the trio said he'd, we have this thing that is totally eluding me again, apologies. I'm going to move on for now. A witch is a hag. An Apple computer, for short, is a Mac, a Macintosh computer, as they once were called. The state school southeast of Columbus. Um, well, Columbus is in Ohio. So we could take an educated guess that this might be Ohio U, Ohio University. Let's let's check the crosses. Rocks blank fighters. That would be the Foo Fighters. Way to go. Could be nice one or nice job, but could well start with nice based on the crosses. Wanderers, probably nomads. Short excursions could be jaunts, and then that would make this nice job. A Torah teacher uh, would be a rabbi, teaches the, the Torah. The second member of the, of the trio said he'd, well, this looks like pull some strings. So is this, oh, oh my, <laughs> sometimes I really have to wonder what is going on in my head because how did I not see that this was toot his own horn? What on earth was I thinking? To this own horn? To, to not even spelled like the preposition, but spelled like the what adverb, I guess? To, what was I thinking? It's toot his own horn. The first member of the trio said he toot his own horn. I need to do some crosswords, some more crosswords, I guess, to get my mental, to mental activity uh, flowing efficiently once again, apparently. Um, so the second member of the trio said he'd pull some strings. Sorry about that. Anyway, let's keep going. To faint, uh, faint as light is dim, dim light. To make giggle, say, would be to amuse, to amuse someone, like a, like a clown might. You think I'm a clown? I feel like one after this toot his own horn business, this debacle. T-Rex, e.g., is a dino, because it's, uh, we see it, it's clues abbreviated up there, so we're looking for an abbreviated form of dinosaur. Nasal cavity, oops, is your sinus. Emotional turmoil is angst. The leader of the Israelites across the Red Sea is Moses. And let's look at the cross here. 
companion of Frodo in the Lord of the Rings, that would be Sam, so Moses makes perfect sense. Lines on an urban map are streets, STs for short, and we're looking for an abbreviation. First group with a number one billboard hit alphabetically, while that certainly sounds like ABBA, they would be alphabetically first in most lists of lists of bands, I would think. Um, cattle breed. Uh, I'm not sure offhand, actually. Let's come back to it. Risky things for a car to run on. Well, you wouldn't want to be running on fumes. A chasm. It's probably an abyss, looking at these crosses. Fibrous. Um, if something's fibrous, I don't know, is it, is it maybe ropey? I'm not sure offhand. Dull colored, if something is dull colored, it's drab. If one is attired like Batman or Superman, you're caped, you're wearing a cape. Signature Obama legislation for short. Here's another, um, so this is being pointed to by C-SPAN, and this is appropriately enough congressionally related because Congress would have had to pass this legislation, the ACA, the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. A bouquet emits an aroma. If something is fibrous, so maybe it is ropey, actually. The third member of the trio said she'd drum up something, probably. Let's see. Exam for many a 10th grader, for short. Oh, heavy on the U.S. clues here. This is the PSAT, the um, Practice Standardized Achievement Test, I think is what the P stands for. Thomas Hardy's Blank of the Dubervilles. This is Tess of the Dubervilles from literature. To focus single-mindedly on something is to obsess. We sort of briefly obsess over these little grids for the time we do a crossword every day. Blank and sciences, arts and sciences, it looks like. Um, if one is naked, one is bare. And if one is rational, one is sane. One hopes we can remain rational and sane as we age. Uh, the third member of the trio said she'd drum up business. So this must be a jazz trio. This must not be a brand. I think I was, I think I was being um, going down some incorrect uh, pathways here with this jazz thing because I was trying to think of a brand that had jazz in it. But it might just be a jazz trio, and these are the three musicians who are participating in it. One of whom is a horn player. One of whom it pulls some strings. So if he's pulling strings, um, he's probably a bass player, playing a stand-up bass or potentially an electric bass, but probably a probably a stand-up bass. And then the third member of the trio said she'd drum up business. She's the drummer. So that's probably what that is. Um, cattle breed, yeah, like I said, I'm not sure. So a piece uh, each, in other words, something is priced, uh, you know, certain amount each, certain amount a piece. Certain grain, large grain container would be a silo, certainly a very large grain container. A common side dish at a barbecue would be slaw, as in coleslaw, made from cabbage. Um, okay, well, it's not a jazz trio, it's a jazz show. Sorry about that. It's on the right track, but I got it wrong. That's a shame that it wasn't a jazz trio, given that there are three of them. That's too bad. Oh, well, it couldn't have been trio because they said with the trio in this puzzle's clues is trying to promote. I mean, eh, what can you do? Anyway, so it's a jazz show. Blank Devers, three times Olympic track gold medalist. I'm not sure, but this looks like a gale. And then actually that would make this cattle breed Angus. And um, that sounds like a thing that's advertised uh, in uh, commercials for meat all the time. Angus beef this sounds like a thing people are always talking about. Um, so there we go. Solve the Monday puzzle. We've kicked off the week with a fairly gentle puzzle. Um, certainly some U.S. cultural knowledge required in there. Um but I suspect you'd be able to um, do pretty well on this puzzle with the crosses because um, there wasn't a lot that if you, outside of clues, you might simply not know or have, have no way to know. There, there was a lot I think you could get by inference here. So relatively nice and gentle start to the week on Monday, which is exactly what we look for. And so I hope you enjoyed it. hope you also uh, tolerated that little digression at the beginning of the video when I when I sort of discussed that research. I found it interesting. I hope you did as well. And I hope you find this channel generally interesting. And if so, why not subscribe so that you see each edition of The Daily Solve as it goes up, as I publish it each morning. And if you do enjoy this channel and you'd like to toss me a couple of quid or a few bucks to help keep it going, the link to my coffee page where donations are accepted is linked below in the description or at the end of this video 
somewhere above above my head. And with that, because I spent so much time um, belaboring things at the beginning of this video, I won't belabor them any further here. So I'll take my leave. I will see you tomorrow for a Tuesday puzzle as we dig in with just the tiniest tinge of additional challenge. And I hope you have an excellent Monday. Take care.